Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Halo teman-teman Jumpa lagi dengan ku siapa Nyan Nyan Dan ya Sesuai dengan hasil voting Dan beberapa komentar kalian Kali ini gue akan membahas Akan game The Joy of Creation Sekali lagi Bukan teori lagi Namun kali ini gue akan menguak Fakta-fakta seputar game ini Jadi nggak perlu basa-basi lagi Mari kita mulai pecahkan misterinya Meskipun misteri selalu ada sampai akhir <laughs> Oke yang pertama akan gue bahas adalah Mengenai asal mula dari game ini Jika kalian sudah menonton video gue yang sebelumnya Gue menyatakan seperti ini Dan sebelum gue mulai bercerita, nggak ada salahnya kan kalau gue bahas dulu apa itu game The Joy of Creation Story Mode ini. Jadi, game ini merupakan game Five Nights at Freddy buatan penggemar atau bisa dibilang fan made. Karena itulah kalian bisa menemukannya di Game Jolt secara gratis. Nixon yang mana merupakan developer game ini sekaligus penggemar dari Scott Carlton. sangat menantikan game terbaru dari seri Five Nights at Freddy yang tidak kunjung muncul. Bahkan saat itu Scott sengaja memprank para penggemarnya dengan menyatakan seperti ini. Yap, game Five Nights at Freddy Sister Location dibatalkan karena banyaknya bocoran yang tersebar. Semua penggemar kecewa dan ya Nixon pun memiliki ide untuk membuat game Five Nights at Freddy versinya agar penggemar yang kecewa mungkin bisa sedikit teratasi atau terobati oleh game buatannya dan ya oke okay, stop seperti yang kalian tahu itu hanyalah teori gue saja pada kenyataannya Nixon sebenarnya menyatakan kalau dirinya sendiri itu kurang percaya diri dalam membuat sebuah cerita untuk sebuah permainan video game jadi ia pun iseng dan memutuskan Untuk menggunakan karakter yang sudah ada Dengan kisah yang sudah ada Namun dengan cerita versinya sendiri Ya semacam alternatif universe lah Bahkan Ia pun melihat banyak sekali model animasi Five Nights at Freddy bertebaran Sehingga ia pun memutuskan untuk memakainya Dengan sedikit diedit Dimana hal itu Ia kemukakan sendiri pada video tanya jawabnya Yang berikut cuplikannya Um, since I was still quite unexperienced and kind of sucked at writing stories and everything, I felt like it was a good idea to use an already existing game where you have a foundation story characters to put your own twist on. Like, uh, when I f- my first ever uh, attempt at a game was uh, those Nights at Fredbears, which was supposed to be uh, FNAF but with a fresh uh, twist. So yeah, generally just easier to start with a fan game, because you already have foundations and everything. Fair enough. Okay, so um, this was back when I was the Nixon that didn't do any planning beforehand and didn't look at all the available options. I had the withered models made by Everything Animations already lying around on my PC, and because I actually really like the withereds, and when it came down to making the characters for the JF creation, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take them, remove some limbs, retexture them, put phantom eyes on them, and uh, call it a day. They kind of look creepy, but you can't exactly call them uh, well designed. Original. Yeah, that's Original. how the ignited were born. The famous characters of the Duke of Creation series, <laughs> the ignited. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's like a fan, ma- a fan name that I uh, ended up sticking with. Oh yeah, it wasn't made by you? No, I didn't come up with a name. I didn't even have a name for them back then. But somebody was like, yeah, let's call them Ignited. And I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Huh. Dan ya, sebelum gue membahas mengenai game The Joy of Creation Story Mode ini, gue sempat nanya kepada kalian tentang game The Joy of Creation Halloween Edition dan The Joy of Creation Reborn. Yang mana beberapa dari kalian berteori kalau pada kedua game ini kita bermain sebagai Nick Yang mana di The Joy of Creation Halloween Edition Kita bermain sebagai Nick yang bekerja di bangunan Fuzzbear Fry 
Dan pada game The Joy of Creation Reborn, kita ini bermain sebagai Nick yang pulang ke rumah lamanya dan malah dikejar-kejar oleh animatronik yang mana ya seperti yang kita semua tahu setelah dikejar-kejar animatronik Nick pun mati di rumahnya sendiri menurutku itu teori yang bagus dan cukup masuk akal namun setelah gue telusuri lebih lanjut faktanya pada akun reddit resmi milik Nixon saat ia membagikan sebuah trailer game The Joy of Creation Halloween Edition ada seorang yang pernah bertanya kepadanya tentang apakah game ini merupakan canon dari seri game The Joy of Creation Story Mode dan Nixon pun menjawab tidak belum cukup sampai di sana masih di seputar Reddit ada seorang pengguna yang bertanya kepada Nixon mengenai tujuan utama atau maksud dari pembuatan game The Joy of Creation Reborn dan sungguh tak terduga Nixon menjawabnya ia menyatakan kalau game The Joy of Creation Reborn itu juga tidak memiliki cerita atau hubungan apapun dengan game The Joy of Creation Story Mode ini Nixon membuat game The Joy of Creation Reborn itu hanya untuk mengetes fitur free roam dan pergerakan animatroniknya saja hanya itu jadi ya singkatnya kedua game ini sebenarnya tidak memiliki hubungan dengan Joy of Creation Story Mode meskipun kita bisa melihat easter egg atau semacamnya sudah paham? Oke okay, kalau begitu, mari kita lanjutkan ke pembahasan game The Joy of Creation ini. Oke okay, di komentar ada yang menyatakan kalau The Joy of Creation Story Mode ini adalah game horror yang menjadi kenyataan. Oke okay, oke okay, oke, okay. karakter yang bernama Scott Cawthon itu memang nyata. Rumahnya yang terletak di Texas pun juga merupakan kenyataan. Namun game ini tidak benar-benar ke dunia nyata. Atau lebih tepatnya, dunia yang kita tempatin sekarang. Cerita pada game ini hanyalah cerita karangan Nixon yang menggunakan referensi dunia nyata dalam gamenya. Alasannya melakukannya adalah untuk membuat gamenya berbeda dengan game yang lainnya. Yang mana ia membuat jalan cerita kalau karakter game keluar game untuk membalas dendam. Tapi pada kenyataannya hal ini tidak benar-benar nyata, oke? Okay? Berikut cuplikan pada video tanya jawabnya. You know, you put his actual family there. Oh yeah. That Absolutely. would have been way like... too much. Uh, the thing with yeah, the plot the... of the Joy Creation is that it's supposed to take place in quote unquote the real world. Right. An alternate universe. Yes, and um, if you really want to get technical, it's not really about Scott Cough. Uh, th- this Scott Cough of, you know, the real, real, real world. The, the world that we're living in. I think that uh, even the actual model of the, the Joy of Creation Scott had a goatee. Yeah. Like a, he doesn't look like actual Scott. Like a bad guy goatee and he was like mm-hmm. fat and had a suit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd imagine Scott wearing a suit every day. But not a goatee. But so, no, yeah, no. the um, he is Scott Cawthon only by name. Um, he has a different VA. He doesn't sound like Scott Cawthon. It's about the idea. It's about the idea of the creator of the FNAF series getting haunted by his own creations. Hmm. So if we think about it like that, it's not creepy at all. (laughs) It's not creepy. It's really cool that Scott did not freak out about that. Yeah, he was very cool about it. But again, he's, you know, a public personality. You should be able to deal with... um, Well, what if... Well, the original idea was that it was not um, a story within the real world, but in the FNAF universe. That story was made by um, a different person, I didn't really take part in that much. Yeah. But after that person kind of left the development and I went to make the free roam and then had to make a new story, I had this idea of, yeah, let's just, you know, make something new. Because I don't think any fan game did that, where you actually play as Scott. I do remember that know. after uh, the Jeff Creation released, I did see a fan game called uh, Baby Nightmare Circus that did, yeah, yeah, that. that did have Scott in it as the protagonist, but it was just a dream. Hmm. Oke, okay, selanjutnya ada yang menyatakan kalau simbol mata ini adalah makhluk Mesir kuno ciptaan Dewa Matahari yang menyembah iblis. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. 
Setelah gue cek, Dewa Matahari Mesir kuno itu bernama Ra. Dan dia nggak menciptakan sesuatu yang menyembah iblis. Pada Wikipedia, ia lebih difokuskan ke dalam kisahnya dalam memerintah negeri Mesir dan apa yang ia ciptakan itu lebih ke dewa lainnya seperti Bastet, Sekhmet, dan Hathor. Dan satu-satunya yang menurut gue agak mirip iblis itu adalah si Apep, musuh bebuyutan Ra yang selalu menunggu Ra lengah saat di dunia bawah. Jadi singkatnya sebenarnya Ra ini tidak menciptakan mata ini. Mata ini sebenarnya diciptakan oleh Scott Cawthon. Ya, ini adalah mata para pentem, woi. <laughs> I'm just gonna take them, remove some limbs, retexture them, put phantomize on them. Uh, Oke, okay. jadi maksud sebenarnya dari kalimat Mesir kuno pada cerita ini tidak lain dan tidak bukan adalah fakta bahwa fenomena doppelganger ini memang dimulai pada zaman Mesir kuno. Nixon pun sudah pernah memperlihatkannya kepada kita pada sebuah koran. Dan gue sudah menjelaskan akan koran tersebut. Dan tambahan, gue memang menemukan situs yang menyatakan demikian. Belum cukup sampai di sana, berikut cuplikan dari video tanya jawab mengenai doppelganger ini. Well, a lot of people seem to think that um... The fire, that was where the souls came from, but that's not true. The fire is actually caused by uh, the ignited, um, and uh, the the ghosts, those are um, doppelgangers. Yes, you could call those uh, doppelgangers. Uh, basically, uh, uh, doppelgangers are demons instead of ghosts. The thing mm-hmm. with the uh, the doppelgangers is that in the in like folklore they're supposed to be um demons that when you encounter them you they take the form of you or someone you're close to and then they go on about and interact with other people pretending to be you and then something terrible happens to you as a result like they're supposed to be bad omens right i took the concept of the doppelganger demon or spirit and then fused it with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Wes Craven's new nightmare? Wes Craven's new nightmare, yes. Uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare is about uh, the Freddy Krueger series, the Nightmare on Elm Street series, but it took place in the real world. And the main antagonist was a demon that took the form of Freddy Krueger in the real world, haunted the cast of the movie, and basically became like fed off of the horror of the character so uh, the ghosts quote unquote that became the ignited are doppelgangers that uh, saw how popular the FNAF series was getting so they took the forms of the creations of Scott which were the FNAF characters and then tried to murder him so they he, they could feed off of the creativity the joy and the create on the horror that those characters brought upon the world. So yeah, that's basically the the main backstory of those guys. Mm-hmm. Oke, okay, selanjutnya adalah pembahasan mengenai para endoskeleton atau para the fallen. Jadi, ya, singkatnya mereka ini sama dengan para ignited. Mereka juga adalah doppelganger. Namun mereka tidak berhasil menjadi doppelganger seutuhnya layaknya para ignited. Hal itu gue temukan dalam cuplikan berikut ini. The, the Fallen, they basically started the same way the Ignited did. But the problem with them was that they didn't quite make it through to the real world all the way. That's why um, they're glitched, they didn't bring their suit with them, they're only endoskeletons. And um, they're very unstable, they don't have a lot of control over their powers. Well, generally they start from the same blueprint, you could say, but they just didn't make it through, which makes them... The blueprint yeah. analogy is pretty good. It's, it's a pretty uh, exact, actually. Uh, they mm-hmm. are supposed to be Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Fox, right? Yes, because people are, uh, people asked um, whether they're actually, they represent the Ignited, and yes, they do. They started the same way. But they, they are, are not the Foxy, ignited themselves. But they're not the ignited themselves. 
the ignited are just a group of demons that actually made it through somewhat. Yes. And the reason for why they are so burnt up in the story is that they barely made it out of there. And the fallen are a result of demons that don't make it through all the way. Um, eventually, uh, the ignited ended up being uh, ended up turning into creation at the end of the story, right? Yes. A lot of people, Many people think Michael is creation, but no, no, just the ignited turning into creation. Yeah. So uh, the ignited turn into creation, except for Golden Freddy, right? Yeah. Gold- he still remains. Golden Freddy, since he wasn't actually attacking them, the rest of the family and he left the others to do the work for him, managed to still keep himself together until the end. So that's why he attacks you separately in the end. So Okay, lalu ada animatronic terakhir yang bernama Creation. Yang mana sebenarnya nggak ada maksud tersembunyi sih, cuman karakter boss yang Nixon sambung-sambungin aja. <laughs> Well, creation, uh, the idea behind creation was that he was supposed to be the final boss of the game. So um, what came to my mind when I heard that was, uh, you know, a combination of uh, all the ignited in one uh, monstrous animatronic. So we had like uh, uh, different designs for him. I think you came up with like a uh, scorpion kind of design? Yeah, that he had like right. multiple feet and had like big ass claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we being... don't really have any pictures for that. No, no, no. We I do have uh, this one. gave up on that idea. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of meh compared to the final one, you know, not as... Uh, yeah, it's, he just looks like another comfort. animatronic. Uh, Doesn't look uh, final boss enough. Yeah, so that's when I started to uh, add a lot of wires, making him kind of bulky. We took out the ears because they just looked dumb. Yeah, they look dumb. And added a gigantic third leg. <laughs> yes. Third leg. Third leg. Because I guess he's a tripod. Then, uh, and we added like little uh, wires coming out from his ears and uh, eyes. It's basically like a giant combination of mangle and, and energy. Yeah. And then you started giving oh, yeah. him materials. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, he didn't even have red eyes before. No. Oh, we did change that really quickly. Oh, there he is. And you can see the red eyes. The iconic I really red like eyes. how he looks. Especially that uh, last image with like the red light behind him. Now, for creation, I don't think many people have realized that he has Bonnie's lower jaw. Yes. He has Freddy's top head, Foxy's oh, Yes, top. and he also has Chica's, like, uh, Wither Chica's uh, endoskeleton mouth inside of uh, the head. You can see it there. Yeah. And like a wire feet. holding and everything. Like he has two yes. little, two big uh, chicken feet. Yes. That's a little bow as well. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about the bow. But Look at that. It's kind of uh, hidden in between all the wires. Though. Yeah, in this image it's not very um, cool. Cool. I just said, you know, let's combine all the animatronics into one uh, big, you know, big creation. Hal terakhir yang akan gue bahas adalah tentang si Michael. Kalian tahu, ternyata kita semua salah mengira. Sebelumnya kita mengira kalau si Michael ini adalah anak dari William Afton yang berasal dari game Five Nights at Freddy yang keluar dari game. Namun faktanya tidak begitu. Faktanya Michael di sini hanyalah orang biasa yang melakukan kontrak dengan iblis untuk menjadi doppelganger. Yang mana mungkin untuk lebih jelasnya bisa kalian dengarkan di cuplikan berikut ini. Basically, Michael was a regular dude, a family friend of Scott, who um had a crush on his wife. <laughs> and then he was like, I'm gonna release animatronics that are gonna kill you, and I'm gonna program them to kill and you know and then he sets the house on fire a lot of bad bad you know yeah I'm glad you stepped in so there. uh well M- michael he- he's a he's also a doppelganger yes originally uh, not he you just said originally not he was just a dude he was just a dude but then, but no. then uh, no he uh he wants to take the place of Scott in the family. He wants to basically get rid of Scott and be in his place. Uh, the difference between him and the animatronics is that he's not 
really evil. He doesn't crave death and all that. He just, but he is just he just he is a demon, but he wants to live like a normal person. So yes. he wants to be he wants to kill Scott and take his place, but not because he enjoys it. He just needs it to live. Yeah. So like the cutscene for Addict showed, uh, it's just necessary for him to survive. Uh, to kill Scott. Uh, the basement is that you actually play as Michael in the basement. Yeah, some people don't know that. Yeah, uh, you can see in the uh, in the death tip for the basement, like it yeah, says, it says "Open the way, Michael. Michael." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing with Michael in that uh, section of the game is that it is the very beginning of the story, where Michael is trying to cross from the weird doppelganger reality where they live into the real world. So, like, uh, the levels kind of show the clock, right? The clock shows 6, 2, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, mm -hmm. They are different levels until Michael manages to reach the real world. And you can see at the very end, you can ver see at the very end, door for the basement. You can see it open, and in the the origin, the first cutscene of the, the Geoff creation, you can see that same door next to Michael when he is uh, slumped over on the floor. So, um, yeah, basically Michael takes um, a deal with the Ignited, which are also doppelgangers, and they say, help us get into the real world and we will provide you the family of Scott. Because he wants to be, uh, he wants just to be a family man. He wants just to be a normal dude. Give us Tell Scott. And we will give you his family as a result. As a result. Yep. So that is my Okay. Kurasa cukup sekian untuk video kali ini. Mohon maaf jika pada video ini terdapat banyak sekali kekurangan dan kesalahan. Terima kasih sudah menonton sampai habis. Gue siapa ingin undur diri. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi.